Dona Nobis Pacem, indeed. Thank you, fellas. Good morning. Welcome to worship on this Sunday, the Holy Trinity. You will note that the order of service is a little bit different. We switched to setting 10 today. So for those of you who have been around for a while, you'll recognize the Kyrie and the hymn of praise as being hymns that are familiar to you. We begin our worship this day with confession and forgiveness. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God, whose steadfast love is everlasting, whose faithfulness endures from generation to generation. Amen. Amen. Trusting in the mercy of God, we confess our sin. Reconciling God. We confess that we do not trust your abundance, and we deny your presence in our lives. We place our hope in ourselves and rely on our own efforts. We fail to believe that you provide enough for all. We abuse your good creation for our own benefit. We fear difference and do not welcome others as you have welcomed us. We sin in thought word and deed by your grace forgive us through your love renew us and in your spirit lead us so that we may live and serve you in newness of life amen beloved of god by the radical abundance of divine mercy we have peace with god through christ jesus through whom we have obtained grace upon grace, our sins are forgiven. Let us live now in hope, for hope does not disappoint, because God's love has been poured into our hearts through the Holy Spirit. Amen.
the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God and the communion of the Holy Spirit is with you all. And also with you. Peace of Christ is with you always. And also with you. I invite you, if you have folks with you, to share that peace with one another. And if not, to take your phone and to text, peace be with you, to someone in your address book who, trust me, is in need of receiving peace.
Let us pray. Almighty creator and ever living God, we worship your glory eternal three in one. We praise your power majestic one in three. Keep us steadfast in this faith. Defend us in all adversity. Bring us at last into your presence where you live in endless joy and love. Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. We welcome all who have gathered online to worship God revealed through Christ and by the Holy Spirit. For those who are new to St. Timothy, you are invited to explore what we understand our mission to be by visiting our website. And I urge our members to use this newly minted website to stay informed and connected. We congratulate Jenny Garkey as she has begun year 10 in her role in spearheading, spearheading Christian education here at St. Timothy. And we do give thanks for her ministry. Also on the spotlight page there on your weekly update, um, today is the deadline, of, well, whatever deadline means at the, these days. Um, for turning in the video to me that just extends a greeting from your household to the greater body. So there may be a little grace in that June 7th deadline. Please send it to me. Today's the suggestion. Yeah. It would be nice. <laughs> we continue with the first lesson. A reading from Genesis. In the beginning, when God created the heavens and the earth, the earth was a formless void and darkness covered the face of the deep, while a wind from God swept over the face of the waters. Then God said, let there be light, and there was light. And God saw that the light was good, and God separated the light from the darkness. God called the light day, and the darkness he called night. And there was evening. And there was morning, the first day. And God said, Let there be a dome in the midst of the waters, and let it separate the waters from the waters. So God made the dome and separated the waters that were under the dome from the waters that were above the dome. And, so it, and it was so. God called the dome sky, and there was evening and there was morning, the second day. And God said, let the waters under the sky be gathered together into one place and let the dry land appear. And it was so. God called the dry land earth and the waters that were gathered together he called seas. And God saw that it was good. Then God said, let the earth put forth vegetation, plants yielding seed and fruit trees of every kind on earth that bear fruit with the seed in it. And it was so. The earth brought forth vegetation, plants yielding seed of every kind, and trees of every kind bearing fruit with the seed in it. And God saw that it was good. And there was evening, and there was morning, the third day. And God said, Let there be lights in the dome of the sky to separate the day from the night, and let them be for signs, and for seasons, and for days and years. And let let them be lights in the dome of the sky to give light upon the earth. And it was so. God made the two great lights, the greater light to rule the day and the lesser light to rule the night and the stars. God set them in the dome of the sky to give light upon the earth, to rule over the day and over the night and to separate the light from the darkness. And God saw that it was good. And there was evening and there was morning the fourth day. And God said, let the waters bring forth swarms of living creatures and let birds fly above the earth across the dome of the sky. So God created the great sea monsters and every living creature that moves of every kind with which the waters swarm and every winged bird of every kind. And God saw that it was good. God blessed them saying, be fruitful and multiply and fill the waters in the seas and let birds multiply on the earth. And there was evening and there was morning, the fifth day. And God said, 
Let the earth bring forth living creatures of every kind, cattle and creeping things, and wild animals of the earth of every kind. And it was so. God made the wild animals of the earth of every kind, and the cattle of every kind, and everything that creeps upon the ground of every kind. And God saw that it was good. Then God said, Let us make humankind in our image, according to our likeness, and let them have dominion over the fish of the sea, and over the birds of the air, and over the cattle, and all, over all the wild animals of the earth, and over every creeping thing that creeps upon the earth. So God created humankind in his image. In the image of God he created them. Male and female he created them. God blessed them, and God said to them, Be fruitful and multiply, and fill the earth and subdue it and have dominion over the fish of the sea and over the birds of the air and over every living thing that moves upon the earth. God said, See, I have given you every plant yielding seed that is upon the face of all the earth and every tree with seed in its fruit. You shall have them for food. And to every beast of the earth and to every bird of the air and to everything that creeps on the earth, everything that has the breath of life, I have given every green plant for food, and it was so. God saw everything he had made, and indeed, it was very good. And there was evening, and there was morning, the sixth day. Thus the heavens and the earth were finished, and all their multitude. And on the seventh day, God finished the work that he had done, and he rested on the seventh day from all the work that he had done. So God blessed the seventh day and hallowed it, because on it God rested from all the work that he had done in creation. These are the generations of the heavens and the earth when they were created. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks. be to God. Majestic is your name in all the earth. You whose glory is chanted above the heavens, out of the mouths of infants and children. You have set up a fortress against your enemies to silence the foe and avenger. When I consider your heavens, the work of your fingers, the moon and the stars you have set in their courses, what are mere mortals that you should be mindful of them, of human beings that you should care for them? You have made them little less than divine. With glory and honor you crown them. You have made them rule over the works of your hands. You have put all things under their feet. All flocks and cattle, even the wild beasts of the field, the birds of the air, the fish of the sea, and whatever passes along the paths of the sea. O Lord, our Lord, how majestic is your name in all the earth. A reading from 2 Corinthians. Paul writes, Finally, brothers and sisters, farewell. Put things in order. Listen to my appeal. Agree with one another. Live in peace. And the God of love and peace will be with you. Greet one another with a holy kiss. All the saints greet you. The grace of the Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, 
and the communion, communion of the Holy Spirit be with all of you. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. According to St. Matthew, the 28th chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. Now the eleven disciples went to Galilee, to the mountain to which Jesus had directed them. When they saw him, they worshipped him, but some doubted. Jesus came and said to them, All authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. Go therefore and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, and teaching them to obey everything that I have commanded you. And remember, I am with you always to the end of the age. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Well, smart clergy usually go on vacation right about now. And since I'm still here, you can figure out where I fall on that spectrum. We were supposed to be at Senate Assembly in Chattanooga, which would have gotten me off the hook. But COVID-19 arrived, and those plans all went sideways. So since we're all here, I thought I'd find someone who knows a thing or two about the Trinity, and that someone is Richard Rohr, author and Franciscan friar, who wrote a marvelous book entitled The Divine Dance, The Trinity and Your Transformation. If you haven't read it, you should. And if you have read it, read it again. I did, and it's helpful. It's like cool water on a parched throat. I grew up in upstate South Carolina, not exactly the bastion of progressive theological insight. It was there but you had to look for it in order to find it. Far more prevalent in that part of the world were the strident and the angry voices who yelled on the radio back then about getting right with God, about the imminent return of a very angry God about how to avoid the pain of hell by virtue of following a long list of rules. No drinking, no dancing, no smoking, no monopoly playing. Apparently God has an aversion to any and all board games which employ the use of dice. And because of God's great love for me and for the rest of creation, if we didn't get our act together too sweet, we would be bound for the pains and the fires of eternal damnation because of God's great love. That was confusing for a child. It was confusing, I imagine, for many adults as well. And I am eternally grateful that my parents landed in the Lutheran church way back when because we really like to play Monopoly. But I digress. From the outset of Rohr's work, we encounter a refreshing and an expansive view of God and a relationship into which God creates and places us. We encounter God as community. God is not what you think. Visions of an angry, distant, moral scorekeeper, supernatural Santa Claus handing out cosmic lottery tickets to those who attend the right church or say the right prayer dominate 
our culture. And for many, God has become irrelevant or simply unbelievable. In the Divine Dance, Father Rohr points readers to an unlikely opening beyond this divinity impasse, the at times forgotten ancient mystery of the Trinity. God as utterly one, but yet three. Drawing from scripture, theology, and the deepest theological insights of mystics, philosophers, and sages, Father Rohr presents a compelling alternative to the aloof and fairy tale versions of God. One God, belovedly in communion as all vulnerable, all embracing, all given to you and to me. The divine dance makes accessible and practicable the Christian tradition's most surprising gift, God as community, as friendship, as dance. Then he ends with a question. Are you ready to join in? That's a thought-provoking way to enter what is admittedly a rather mind-bending concept, the Trinity. That's why people go on vacation now. Trinity is not simply the product of clever theologians as a way to twist up theology students, not just a mystery beyond all mysteries, but a dance, a dance. Dance into which God invites you and me and them. Two left feet and all. Love of monopoly notwithstanding. Human failings in full view. We are brought into the very heart of God. Embraced, empowered, and enveloped. Brought into a choreography We can't explain, but which we spend a lifetime attempting to celebrate. William Young, who wrote The Shack, contributes a thought-provoking poem. Now, I'm not a huge poetry person, but I thought this was pretty profound. One alone is not by nature love or laugh or sing. One alone may be prime mover, unknowable, indivisible, all. And if everything is all and all is one, one is alone, self-centered, not love, not laugh, not sing. Two, yin and yang, dark and light, male and female, contending dualism, affirming evil, good, striving toward balance at best face to face, but never community. Three, face to face to face, community. Ambiguity, mystery, love for the other and for the other's love within other-centered, self-giving, loving, singing, laughing. A fourth is created, ever loved and loving. God as community, not self-centered, focused on the one, but other focused. God as community continually drawing us in, twirling us about, inviting us not to trudge or to slog along, but to skip and to dance. 
we haven't seen a lot of skipping and dancing of late. We have been involved in a different kind of choreography. We have experienced rage and pain. Touched off by the needless death of George Floyd, but going back decades and centuries, a long, too long line of needless death. We have experienced chaos and violence to a shocking degree. We have experienced now largely peaceful protests where people give voice to pain and to scars built up over decades and lifetimes. A different kind of dance. A dance now where people join hands and hearts in a corporate outpouring of humanity denied. And a need for change and for shalom. All that is with us. All that is part of the dance. All that involves us as members of this American experiment as we hear and listen and lament. But that pain and that chaos do not define us. We can and we must choose another dance. We can and we are invited into another dance, not a dance of violence or a dance of photo opportunities, but a dance where hearts and hopes and humanity join in mutual respect and dignity. That's a choice for each and for all. Back over Labor Day, Amy and I had the Conyers contingent come in to visit a grand and glorious thing, exhausting for two old people, but also life affirming and hope filled. Throughout these weeks, we've had frequent video calls with the Chattanooga contingent, and the same result where we see two-year-olds in all their exuberance. You ever watched little kids move from place to place? <laughs> they don't slog. They don't trudge. They skip. They dance. They run sometimes headlong into a chair, but they run. They're filled with exuberance. They live with abandon. They laugh at an unknown script, and they sing to unheard music, delighted and delighting everybody around. They find joy and wonder in an empty box or in a croquet mallet. At our house, we tried introducing Klaus to the wonders of croquet, and perhaps two is a little bit young for all of those rules and those regulations, because after about 20 seconds, the thrill was gone with the hitting the ball through the little wickets. But then he discovered an ice cube that one of us had dropped on the patio, just an ice cube sitting on the concrete, and down came the mallet, and those ice shards exploded, cooling off hot legs. Oh, there was laughing and singing in a holy language, wholly unknown to the big people. But a little person having an absolutely wonderful time. And then every so often, we figured out, you just keep throwing the ice cubes down there and Buster would go after them. Every so often, he'd stop and he'd take the mallet and he'd look up at one of us and say, now you, now you. 
simple wonder of exploding ice, little bits of coolness on a hot day. Now you, now you, that's the dance of the Trinity, the invitation of God to each and to all to come into the dance. You don't have to understand it. You don't have to be able to explain it. You don't have to be able to enumerate the steps. You just follow the leader. You don't need to speak the language. Laughter is its own language. And smiles are contagious. You and I have learned slogging and trudging and depression. Delighted dance comes naturally. The dance of the Trinity is a wondrous and a freeing invitation from a wildly exuberant God, far from being an angry or capricious God of misery seeking to exact vengeance for broken rules. Triune God invites us into a dance of wonder, of acceptance, of affirmation. Creator, Redeemer, Sanctifier, waltzing to songs unheard but always felt. A unity made more intricate and inviting by each entrant. A complex and exotic dance we began in baptism spreads across a lifetime and is brought to completion when this life ends. Not slogging, not trudging, just wonder and excitement and community, complete with ice cubes and mallets and laughter. Welcome to Trinity Sunday. Welcome to the dance. Amen. Thank you.
the whole church, let us confess this gift of faith we share using the words of the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father, through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, was incarnate of the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary, and became truly human. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is worshipped and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy, Catholic, and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. At this time, we invite you to take a moment and think about offering. We thank you, those of you who have in the past and who continue to make financial contributions to St. Timothy Lutheran Church. We appreciate your stewardship. They enable us to continue providing ministry in your name here in this community. For all of us, we now have an opportunity to think, how can we offer our time and our talent to those people in the community around us? How can we continue to say thank you to those frontline workers, those first responders, the mail person, the person at the grocery store? So take time now to think about how you can offer your time and your talent to send a card, to make a phone call, to send a text to someone and simply say, thank you for what you're doing.
called into unity with one another and the whole creation. Let us pray for our shared world. Dearest Lord, let us rest easy on the Sabbath. May we be fulfilled, knowing you are always there for us. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. Compassionate God, stir up love in our hearts and help us take actions that make a difference in the lives of others. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. Loving God, we pray for all families who are considering adoption. Bless the children waiting for their forever home. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. God of protection, we lift up to you all young drivers, especially those who have recently got their license. Give them good judgment and keep them safe. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. God of community, you form us as your church. Guide our bishops, pastors, deacons, and all the baptized in sharing your life-giving good news with all the world. Strengthen us to be bold in our proclamation. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. God of creation, you called everything into being. Sustain this world with your renewing care. Inspire us to see waterways, plant life, birds, fish, insects, and mammals, and call them good. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. God of counsel, all authority belongs to you. Encourage the leaders of this and every land to seek peace, equality, and unity. We ask that you give your wisdom to all during this time of public protests, to those who are tasked with maintaining order, and to all who are raising their voices as advocates for freedom and equality. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. God of care, you created us in your image. Help us to see your likeness in one another. Open our eyes to see and attend to all who face oppression and suffering. Console, heal, and nourish all in need. Especially we lift up to your care Susan Bailey, Kristen Deneen, Mike Dubeck, Dave Edsel, Cheryl Escobar, Meredith House, Judith Hughes, Ed Kaler, Keith Langford, Ruffy Longry, Anthony Marino, Ashlyn Myers, Bill Nelson, Tom Nelson, Mark Pisoni, Lori Rustkowski, Kirk Ryder, Sandy Schisler, Kathy Smith, Linda Yonke, and others we lift up to you by name now. Martha. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. God of companionship, you accompany this body of faith. As the rhythms of summer begin, protect all who travel, renew all who will enjoy a time of Sabbath, and shelter all who will not be protected from the sun's heat. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. As the body of Christ, all are invited at this time to present other petitions. We place into your hands, O God, all those who have died with COVID-19. We pray for all of those who are infected, all who live in fear, all who live in anger, all who live in isolation. We pray for your healing, your spirit of shalom to flow over and rest upon our nation. Hear us, O oh God. Your, your mercy, mercy is great. God of compassion, you comfort us in our grief with the promise of the resurrection. We give you thanks for the saints of all time and in our lives. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy is great. Receive these prayers, O oh God, and those prayers too deep for words. Receive them all through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses 
as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Neither death, nor life, nor angels, nor rulers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor powers, nor height, nor depth, nor anything else in all of creation will be able to separate us from the love of God in Christ Jesus. God the Creator, Jesus the Christ, and the Holy Spirit the Comforter bless you and keep you in eternal love. Amen.
in peace. Christ is with you. Thanks be to God.